So I'm just going to show you how players, clubs and coaches use the Ultimate Training Ball wall chart and portable chart. Now they come in different sizes both in plain material and magnetic where you can slide these black magnetic discs to represent the height and speed for the player. So for myself when I'm coaching or even if I'm playing a drill it's very useful to come over and physically move the discs to the position where you're committing to strike the cue ball and then go back to the table. So, so that's a very good way to decide on your height and speed before you approach the shot which is a big step that players tend to miss in their pre-shot routine. Now you can also use the portable version. A lot of people print these smaller ones in A3 or A2 size and post it on their wall or this one is the one I use that's portable and made from magnetic material. So we have these discs again here in a smaller scale. So this feature of the ultimate training ball is what I was craving for in my 20s as a competitor. We had training balls, rudimentary training balls back in the early 90s, but they were all symmetrical. So the design was the same up, down, left or right. So after the shot, you couldn't tell were you aiming centre ball whether the cueing error you made by evidence of the chalk mark position on the cue ball you couldn't tell whether that error was top left or bottom right or top right or bottom left because it was symmetrical so that's why we designed the training tool to be recognisable in its orientation so for example if I want to play dead centre cue ball, that would be my target. I'll attempt to do a deliberate mistake here to exaggerate the mistakes we might make in the club environment. And what I'm going to use is the blue chalk, a definite no-no for snooker players, but blue chalk, green chalk works, but blue chalk is even better. It tends to mark the cue ball even better. So it leaves a, a, a nice uh, evidence on the cue ball for you. So if I was playing dead centre of the cue ball, <clears throat> and for example, on delivery, I move the cue out that way, you can see the cue ball spinning nicely, completely unintentionally, which is what you would see happening in a club environment were the balls to be spotted, but players don't realise they're putting all this unintentional side on the ball. So what I'm going to do is come round and show you where this error is on the ball. So just to show you that I'm not cheating, the camera will follow me around. And we'll just go nice and close here to see. Let's wait for that to zoom in. And can you see where the chalk mark is there? So it's not a huge amount of side, actually, is it, that I've put on? See that? It's not a huge amount of side, but a considerable amount of spin was imparted onto the ball for that small error. So this is something that can keep you fascinated uh, for hours and hours. And it used to keep me interested in my queuing perfection, my endless pursuit for queuing perfection when I was competing. So have a look at that on the table, get some blue chalk and see if you can refine your accuracy. One thing we have to be aware of when measuring our cueing accuracy by the chalk mark evidence on the surface of the ball is that during design what we decided was that these numbers, naught in the centre going up to 4, plus 4 on the top of the ball and minus 4 on the bottom, right number 4 here and left number 4 here, were where the centre of the tip should be aiming. So for example, if we're aiming this, the centre of the tip to dead centre or zero, the chalk mark will be left on the cue ball at dead centre, at the zero position on the cue ball. Now, if, because the ball is curved, if we go up here to aim at plus four, you can see we're aiming the centre of the tip at plus four, aren't we? 
but because the player's eyes are this side of the tip, it's the easiest way to sight the ball. But from here you can see clearly that the centre of the tip aiming at plus four, or the highest part of the cue ball, actually leaves a chalk mark at plus three. So what I don't want you to think is, ah, oh, there's a chalk mark at plus three, I need to hit higher on the cue ball, because that will result in, if the chalk is striking number four, you will have a miscue. So the miscue limit is where the centre of the tip is aiming plus four or minus four or left four or right four. That's the miscue limit, not if the edge of the tip is on those respective numbers. So just bear that in mind when you're looking at your chalk mark evidence on particularly the extreme parts toward uh, the threes and fours of the cue ball map.